Howdy, and welcome to the White Hat Law Show with Warren Nord, where we cover a mix of current events, politics, and the law. Take it away, Warren. Welcome to White Hat Law. I'm Warren Nord, and this week we have Tony Tenderholt joining us. We're going to be talking about the Texas miracle, our economy, and what threatens it in the upcoming election. So, welcome to the show, Tony. Um, tell us, why do we care about what Texas does in its economy? You know, first and foremost, it's it's important to note that people always say, as Texas goes, so goes the rest of the nation. And I really, truly believe that um, the Texas economy is as strong as it's ever been. Uh, in the last couple of years, uh, under Republican leadership, Texas has gone from the 12th uh, largest economy in the world, that's the entire globe, to the 10th largest. And that's a pretty powerful message. And uh, the fact that our economy is like that is, is, is one of a couple of reasons that people from other states are coming to Texas all the time. Right. Well, I, I think I heard here's, uh, Forbes put us at $1.6 trillion. That's something else. You start losing sight. What does that mean? I don't <laughs> know what that means. Right. Uh, first, for a current economic climate, uh, 100 of the 1,000 largest public companies based in Texas. So um, pretty amazing. Now. Is that because we give special uh, incentives to everybody to come in, or is it because we just have a generally good business climate? I think it's... it's uh, we give them the really hard questions here. No, and, and honestly, <laughs> it sounds like a hard question, but it's not. Um, we try not to over-regulate business and let uh, free market rule. I mean, there's a reason that we have almost 1,500 people a day moving from other states to the state of Texas. There's a reason that businesses are leaving other states to come to Texas, because we don't regulate like the other states. Look at California. I mean, the regulations that are in California that hinder business, the tax, uh, the taxing that they do in California, and I'm just using California as an example, right. it's all over the country. Um, we, as Texans and as legislators in Texas, create a friendly business environment which uh, lends uh, an environment to be the 10th largest economy in, in the world. I, I'm always struggling with the, the Texas uh, there was the Enterprise Fund and how many of those things matter or is it just an excuse for people to do what they're going to do anyway and get paid more for it. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your position on that? So I, I, I feel that businesses are going to come to Texas or right. not come to Texas. I feel that some, sometimes when those Enterprise Funds are used, the, the state or the, 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 the city or municipality feel like they have to have to use it to compete with other uh, cities, counties, or with another state. When in actuality, the business climate here is so good that I think there would be such a small number uh, impacted um, that wouldn't come. I, there's always gonna be a small handful of businesses that might not have come to Texas because of that, but is that really the, the specific business that you want? I think sometimes there's a, there's an attorney involved somewhere that says, I have to justify my job, so I'm going to get a special perk for this business to come here, or on the other side, I've got to just my, justify my job, so I'm going to find ways to help people come to Texas so I can claim that they came to Texas because of me. And so I, um, I've always struggled with those things. Well, you know, I, 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 uh, I don't blame some cities or counties for using those because they exist and they're, they're, they're not outlawed. It's part of the, the way the system works right now. I get it that they do it. Um, but I, I sure hate using taxpayer dollars to incentivize a business. And I, I hope that someday we're able to get away from that and let the business flourish on their own and let free market create an amazing uh, business atmosphere for those companies. Well, one of the, you know, we'll talk about these races in a minute, but one of the issues that's come up is local control in some of these cases, and, and there is somebody I know who's a good Republican who's supporting a Democrat because he thinks that she's not supporting local control. And so the response that I had to them was, okay, so in this in this state, you guys, I guess it was the last session, mm -hmm. decided that, that, that services like Uber should be allowed to operate irrespective of what the local city says. Tell, how did that happen? Was that this last so, session? So it, it was. I mean, you'll see in different cities where airports uh, don't have the same equality for Uber, Lyft, and different rideshare programs that taxis do. You see it in New York City. Right. But in the state of Texas, Austin was really bad about it. Um, they took away the ability for a, f a free market company, uh, uh, Uber or Lyft right. um, ride sharing, 
and be able to do the same things that taxi cabs do. And look, I, I'm not going to beat around the bush. The taxi cab industry across the country is almost mafia style. The way that no they, the way that they lobby, the way the the amount of money they have. Um, so we legislated that it should be fair across the state. Those consumers should be able to choose which company they want to use. Do they want to use the cab company or do they want to use one of the ride share and, and they should be able to pull up to the same curb and pick up the same people. Well, I, it's, it's always been funny to me that if you if you want to open up a grocery store, if Albertsons wants to open up next to a Kroger, you don't go to the city council and say, please let me open up. They don't have a, a public hearing to say, where Albertsons can come and say, well, look, Kroger shouldn't be allowed in because we have more business. We, we can handle this and we, we, don't, we shouldn't have to put up with this kind of a competition. We, we don't do that for grocery stores or dentists or mechanics, but for taxis, taxis are special and so they get to do this. And so, you know, it's a corrupt system and it's one of those places where you go, so what about, you people who think that local control is everything, it's like it's a, a mantra that should be worshipped. Um, what about that? And they say, well, okay, you're right about that, but not about these other things. And you f slowly find out, no, you really, you just like to be in charge of things and you don't like losing that. Well, you uh, know, local control is really important. I'll give you a, a perfect example of local control. When my wife and I go to New York City, taxi cab is a perfect example. My wife prefers to use a taxi or the subway. I prefer Uber or Lyft. And the local control is that my wife and I discuss which one of those two we're going to use. There you go. The That's local control. That the, government, <laughs> that the government doesn't tell us which one we can use because we're on a specific corner. Yeah. And I think that's a really fair example of, of, of really the free market. And I want to I be very clear. As a Texas legislator, I don't want to take local control away from cities or counties. I just want them to quit... Uh, doing that sort of stuff, right. not allowing businesses to do certain things. And let's be very clear, the lowest level of local control right. is the voter. Absolutely. It's the people that go to the polls and push the consumer. The yeah, yes. the, the consumer. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when people say local control, let's move that down to the individual. So it's always funny how people pontificate for control where, where they are in control and, and they control other people. You know, so. a, a really good example is the governor's tax plan, which again is another reason that our economy is so good is because we have people that are trying to decrease the tax burden on the individual across the state. Governor's tax plan is a cap of 2.5% this time. Um, I think it's wonderful because anything over 2.5 goes where? It goes to the polls. The individual people that are paying that tax gets to decide whether they want to increase taxes over that amount or not. That's local control. Now explain that a little bit because I'm, I'm, there's uh, outside the small political world, people don't really know. All they, what they people tend to make decisions who they're going to vote for based on who they like, right. who speaks well. And it's just accordingly, it's just incredibly stupid, you know, right. as though you're going to hang with this person, you know, or no, he's making lives decisions for you that impacts your life. You know, we're not electing somebody to go have a beer with. You know, right. So I'll tell you that. So the tax plan. Last time, um, we tried really hard to make it so that the increase on the taxes on your home couldn't go higher than 6%. That was last session, we were really close, it didn't pass. If, it, if they wanted it to go over 6%, the individual voters would go to the polls and have to decide if they wanted their- to ratify that yes. one way or the other, yeah. Well, the governor's plan is 2.5. I'm gonna be realistic and tell you that the Texas House, some agree, some disagree. Realistically, it could be four, it could be 5%, but I think there's gonna be some level of a bill passed where the, municipalities that actually do the taxing, and I think people misunderstand when your home is taxed, it's not the Texas legislature that does it. On the bottom of the form, if you look, it says your state representatives and senators are not the taxing authority. It's not on you. <laughs> it's the city councils, the school boards, and the county commissioners. Right. All three of those tax you on your home. And what, we, what, what the Republican plan is to go and put a cap, and the cap isn't a true cap where they can't go over it. The cap is, let's pretend it ends up being 4% your house can increase by four, more than 4% per year unless y'all go to the polls and you push the button that says, yes, we agree that it should go to five or six or 8%. The lowest level of local control. Right. It's powerful because it's their money, right. the voters' money, so then they get to go and vote if 
there, an election has to happen right. if it exceeds that amount. And I think that's a powerful message that gives the power back to the people where it belongs. Right. I, I think that's awesome. And I, and I'm, I applaud the, the governor for, for taking the lead on that, establishing a good, a good goal. If it winds up being 4%, it's still going to be a much better deal than what we have now. So. And, and when people vote, I, I want to talk both sides of the story. Yeah. The cities, the counties, the school districts, they're trying to balance that they have enough money to run the things for the cities and counties that they, that they have. So there's going to be a balance when you go vote. My recommendation is educate yourself. There could be instances where maybe it does need to increase. I, I don't know that. I'm, I'm talking right. very generically. And so educate yourself because the city or county or school district may have a valid reason that you agree with or you might disagree. But I just encourage people and I implore them to educate themselves when those votes come up so that they know that what yes and no truly means. Because if you vote no and they needed some kind of additional services, maybe the sheriff's department needs bigger jail or, or something, right. you just need to be smart about what you're doing. Well, I appreciate that. So uh, let's take a break. We'll come back. We're going to talk about the, the races yeah, this in November, which imperil the Texas miracle. So we'll be right back. Hang on, y'all. More with Warren when we get back. Welcome back, folks. You're listening to the White Hat Law Show with Warren Norris. Take it away, Warren. Welcome back. Uh, we just got finished up talking about why Texas is great and some of the things that are uh, that uh, the details of that. And so now we're going to talk about what's threatening the Texas miracle and our economy in the form of elections, because elections become perilous whenever uh, uh, people want to change the direction. I've always, I've always thought it was kind of funny when people come here from Chicago or Boston and they say, we have all these services uh, and I don't have these here. And, and why not? And I say, well, you have a job here, right? You know, so, um, which races do you, are you paying most attention to, besides your own? You know, you know? I was going to say, <laughs> my own. I, I have a race, and, and we're doing all the work necessary. We're not ever going to take anything for granted. Um, we're out talking to voters, putting signs out, raising money. We're doing all the right things, um, regardless of who's running. I have a Democrat and a Libertarian. Um, and, you know, if, if we do the work, I think we're going to be fine. Um, I am concerned about some other races across the, 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 the county, uh, both Let's, let's start the from state. the top down. How's, okay. how's the governor look? You know, I think the governor has done a great job. And I think so too. And he messages well. Um, he really tries to uh, make sure that folks know what he's doing, even when it's not election time. As a, as a hardcore conservative, mm -hmm. small government guy, I'm sometimes frustrated by Governor Abbott's uh, uh, failure to be as hardcore as me. And I have to be reminded that he has an entire state, and we're in Tarrant County, and, and he's appealing to everybody. So I talk about that a lot. I talk about, you know, you'll have people uh, over on the far right say, you know, that person's not as conservative as you, and I have, as, as I am, and I have to remind them a different body of people elected them, and they have to be a representation of that, that, of that the, area. The people that elect, yeah. elected them. And so you're exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Um, while I, I don't agree with any legislator all the time, right. I think our governor is doing a wonderful job in the state. I'm proud to serve with him. I think his messaging is great, and I think he's going to do really well at the polls. Again, everything we say that's positive is contingent upon Republicans doing what they're supposed to do. Right. You've got to show up and vote. Um, now, of course, Ted's race, Ted Cruz, is a little more problematic. Um, it, it is. Um, you know, when we talk about uh, Senator Cruz's race, we're talking about a whole lot more than just an election happening. We're right. talking about raising money. We're talking about messaging. We're talking about a whole lot of different things. What's important to me and what's important to my family is what did they do? Did they do what they said they were going to do right. when I pushed the button and voted for them last time? And I can say wholeheartedly that Senator Ted Cruz stands up for what's right, always does what he says he's going to do. I never have to second guess what he tells us. Right. Because he truly does what he says he's going to do, and sometimes a little more. Right. The problem is, sometimes I feel like he may not uh, come across as, as his opponent with Mr. Super Friendly and Super Down. I'm, I'm down, cool. I'm yeah. the neighborhood Don't guy. you want to drink a beer with me? You know? Or going yeah. and, and speaking at a rally and dropping F-bombs. Drop, I was amazed by that. I'm, I'm beside myself when I see that as an elected official. Um, children watch right. and hear that and there's there's a lot of adults in our community that don't want to hear that kind of stuff right. and I don't 
I think you're a representation of the people that you serve. And I, and I think we're supposed to, I think the elected per people should set normative boundaries of behavior, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just what you, sh it doesn't mean you never fail. It doesn't mean you're perfect. It, it, it just, you shouldn't, you should say, look how cool I am because I can drop F-bombs. You know, and, and does that matter? It doesn't matter for your voting, but it does matter how you're going to vote, right? Yeah. And so you look at, you look at uh, Ted, well, if, if his opponent had been in the Senate this time around, then the Kavanaugh hearings wouldn't have gone the way that they went necessarily. You know, right. um, these things have huge impacts. They do, and I'll, I'll tell you, Senator Cruz is doing a wonderful job, and we need Senator Cruz to go back to D.C. and keep doing what he's doing. Um, there's risk. There's risk right now because there are Republicans that think that his opponent is, is a good guy and they go to the rallies and they're going to vote for him. But let me be clear. Senator Cruz's opponent, what people are not talking about, and it's funny because my wife and I were talking about it last night and she wants to create a graphic and post it all over social media as an individual, not as a right. spouse of a rep. She wants to put left and right with their pictures and what they stand for. But let's talk about it because nobody right. really does. Ted Cruz's opponent believes in open borders. Right. Let's think about the cost in billions that it costs our state. Let's think about the fact that I served overseas and watched America's sons and daughters die protecting other nations' borders. Right. Yet they want an open border here. I'm willing to bet that he wouldn't just open his door and let people come and go and take sodas out of the house and sleep there and use. Yeah, the he lived down there for a while. You know, I don't see, didn't see that happening. Right. I, and I, I think that it's important to think about the impact on the education system. Education is so important, the financing for education. I, I, you know, my chief of staff and I are right now talking about authoring a bill um, to do a study to find out how much is illegal immigration costing the education system. It's not trivial. It's not trivial. I would say that our local uh, charity hospitals, um, the majority of babies born there are, you know, are constitute anchor babies. They're, these are these are babies born to illegal aliens who come here for that purpose, and now and now they're going to be here for a while. They're going to get government grants. And let's th and let's let's be clear about uh, my messaging is that as a humanitarian, I don't want people living in the shadows. I don't want them feeling like they have to hide. I want them to come across the border, process the paperwork. Federal government has to do a better job as a whole of creating a better system for them to come over if if, if the need is there. But for illegal immigrants to come over and break the law and come over and then have to hide in the shadows and live that kind of life, the humanitarian side of me doesn't want that. I don't want them to live like that. I just, I don't believe in open borders. I think sometimes it's unsafe. Uh, it's a strain on our economy and it's just not fair. And, and uh, Senator Cruz's opponent believes in open borders. Right. Senator Cruz's opponent believes in uh, unlimited abortions across the state, right. which totally goes against our platform. So for voters out there that are considering crossing over to go vote for that individual, it's a bad idea. I, I think that a lot of the problem just comes from um, the, the, the idea that, that Ted's not, not as warm and friendly. And I, I always go back to, you know, who's our the patron saint of the GOP, right? It's Ronald Reagan, you know. And, and how did he get to become Ronald Reagan? He went up and down the West Coast. Uh, for more than 10 years of his life, talking to various groups of people, small groups of people, and, and learning how to relate to other people while he's talking um, in, a, in a very off-the-cuff manner, but it was repeatable. So he really learned how to, it was, it was, it was great training for being president. Um, Ted Cruz has been speaking to the most erudite group of appellate judges. In the, okay, so there's the most erudite group of people on the planet, right, for most of his adult life. It is not the best training for learning how to speak in politics. And so there's a price to be paid for there. Now, the idea that you should be, in, you're, you might lose your race because you don't know how to do the aw shucks as well, or you don't do or that as well. Or, you know, because, you, yeah, you just, you want to go, really? You know, our president does things all the time that drive us all batty. Isn't he doing a wonderful job? But he job, is though? doing a great job, right? His job performance is phenomenal. And so as an employer, you know, you're an employer too, sometimes you have employees that that you don't want to go hang out with. And I don't really care if I want to hang out with you. you know, but they do a great job. Mm -hmm. So if you focus on the job, don't be a child and say, I'm going to hire this person because I like him. Uh, not that Ted's not likable, 
but it, he just does. It's just not an aw shucks kind of guy. I, I tell you, you I know? spent time in the last four years getting to know Senator Cruz, Ted, and his dad and his wife. Now, Raphael's awesome. Right? Amazingly wonderful Christian individuals. Right. He's really smart. Senator Cruz is really intelligent, and when you talk to him on a one-on-one -on -one basis, it's wonderful. It's great because he's really smart in in. I say that he's liberty. much warmer. He's much warmer. It, it comes just this comes across better. He is. But we can admit that we can admit that somebody's not as warm naturally as other people, and and he's doing a great job. And the idea that that you could that you could potentially struggle against a competitor who is nothing close in in, in ability or mm -hmm. the right positions, and you hear people talk, well, I like this person. What's wrong with you? Do you choose your dentist on how well you like him? Or, you, well, I want to go have a beer with that guy. Great, yeah. but don't hire him to work on your heart. You know, or, you know it, it's really important to note something before we go to another race that I really want to talk about is this is the last year in Texas that you can push the Republican button and walk out. Mm. And I'd like to encourage people to do it. Uh, there's several reasons for it, but remember... Um, what the opposition believes in, the, the, the things that they believe in are contradictory to what we do. That doesn't mean that we go mistreat them or we're disrespectful sure. to them, um, but we vote against them. Right. I work with a lot of them on the floor and they're, I get along with them, they're fine, but fundamentally we legislate differently. And so, you know, that brings me to bring a friend, bring your neighbor, right. go vote, push the red Republican button and walk out so that everyone all the way down the ballot at the very bottom, the judges, um, all those folks get elected because that's where the, the uh, state and uh, national level folks end up getting no, elected no. from eventually. But there's a race in, in our area, Connie Burton, Senator There's no Connie doubt Burton. about it. Um, I, I, I enjoy so much working with her o over in the Senate. Um, she's receptive. She listens. She helps us with conservative legislation and her opponent um, is the exact opposite of that. Her opponent, I don't know if you've seen recently on TV, where she wanted to tax folks at the school level uh, but didn't pay her own taxes and had to be sued, I believe, eight times. I, I don't remember the number in the tune of 20-some thousand dollars. Uh, I want to be clear about that. It doesn't make her a bad person. What it means is I want to tax you, but I'm not willing to pay my own. Yeah. And that's very telling. It's, it's like, I'm nonchalant about these things on my own side. Yeah, I, I really struggle with that whole race. Um, that the idea that, that, you know, she was, that Connie's opponent was actually down in Austin with, with Wendy Davis raising money. I said, okay, here, here's the stark difference. If you like Wendy Davis, the person Connie replaced, then, then there you go. But if, but if you rejected Wendy, then reject her again. It's just it's just a new pair of tennis shoes with a new person yep. who believes the same exact thing. And so, uh, when you have a, a leader in the Senate for lower property taxes and getting control of the budget, um, with a proven record, with a with a proven record, Here, here's what concerns yeah. me most about that race. I hear some people that vote for me that I know very well that are considering voting for the Democrat, and it makes no sense to me. Um, if you believe in lower taxes, if you believe in free market and liberty and you believe that life begins at conception in the womb and if you believe any of these things, if you believe that the borders are a sacred entry point for people and that they need to come through legally, you vote for County Burton. Right. Great, strong economy. If you disagree with all of those things I just said, you vote for her opponent. So I just don't quite understand the disparity of someone saying that they'll vote for Republicans except for that one. I'm imploring those people to educate themselves and talk more to people just because you like her opponent, which I, I, she's likable. I Absolutely. met her last week at an education summit that she and I did. Um, likable, I'm not gonna vote for her. Right. Never would I vote for someone that believes that uh, abortion on demand is important. And they have to remember the fights that we have down in Austin over the topics that are near and dear to the voters' hearts, she will fight against us, right? Not she with us. She she's she's not Democrat light. She's not a bull weevil Democrat from the 1970s no. or something. It's a, uh, it's 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 crazy to me. I, it, to me, it reveals whenever somebody says I'm a good Republican, but I'm going to vote for uh, for Ted Cruz's op opponent or Connie Burton's opponent. You know, they're you are one of those people that are going to be, if this county were to turn blue, 
you would go a Democrat and they would just welcome you in and you'd fit. And, and so that tells me that they're really not a Republican. It and just, I, it just and, tells me And when me we that. talk about that, I want to be clear to the people out there watching that it's not just blue against red. It's not just Republican against Democrat. It's all the platform items. Right. It's all the things There's a reason we why we call these it. things. Yeah. yeah, so it's not, I like that person because they smile better or because they'll drink a beer with me. Or, it really comes down to what are they going to do when they get elected. And I'll tell you, uh, Senator Burton and Senator Cruz do exactly what they said they right. were going to do and they'll go back and do it again. They're a known commodity. I'm a firm believer, if you believe in the person that's elected, if you agree with them 70, 80% of the time, you're pretty fortunate. Right. Um, because you can't be all things to everyone. Right. Half the people are gonna love you because they're Democrat, half are gonna hate you. But the bottom line is that we represent our community in mass, right. and that she has a proven record. Senator Cruz has a proven record. I want to serve with Connie Burton again because I have the trust, confidence, and faith that she will do exactly what she says she'll do. I agree. Um, and before you go, I just want to point out what, we're, what's, what the Democrats are doing this time is what we did 30 years ago. You run good people who are willing to lose, and, uh, and that's, what, that's what's happening here. So even if, even if uh, Senator Cruz's opponent is, is beaten and he wins, and he's going to have an impact on some of the lower case, lower level races around the, around the state where a few people more show up for the Democrat side. Um, so these things have a real impact. So it means the Republicans have to go all the way down. You know, Andy Wynn is being challenged, county commissioner, by, by a Democrat, right? And so Ron Wright is, you know, we, we all expect everyone, everybody to show up and we want Ron Wright to win, but he's being challenged, right? And so they provide a full set of challenges, and they they bring their enthusiasm level up by, by having one, you know, uh, one motivating figure. It makes a difference because that's that's how you feed to the next group, and that's why that's why having people challenge County Burton, it's not just one race; it's a big big deal. So, well, I have a, uh, I have a message for the people out there watching. That I think is really important. It's not just going out to vote. You have to go vote. If you don't bring your neighbor. Bring three neighbors, bring your friends, bring your family to vote. And then when you get there, the second thing you need to do is you need to vote Republican, meaning you push the Republican button. This is the last time in Texas you're going to be able to do it. We legislated uh, last session that this would be the last time that you're going to be able to do it because next time you're going to have to go through every Each. single one all the way down. So I implore people, bring your friends, bring your neighbors, bring your family Go vote, vote Republican, push the red button because the blue wave is real. Um, the Kavanaugh hearings have have really energized, enraged, both energized sides. some yeah. some of some of Democrats and some Republicans. Right. But it's all in how do we react to it? Are they going to go out and vote us? Because we have the voters, we just need them to go vote. Right. And and we might also mention because by the time this airs, uh, early voting will just about be starting. Uh, Early vote, so much easier. So much easier. No lines. Most no of the time. lines. You can go anywhere in the county, right? right? You can say so you don't have to go to one spot. Right. Go anywhere you want. Do the early vote. It'll save you time. And then, and then you can take your friends that your coworkers with, because who also live in the county. Right. So, you, so you don't have to go to different spots. So you can take your coworkers to go early vote in one spot. And I, I, I want to leave folks with this when it comes to voting. I was fortunate enough to spend 21 years in the military and I got to travel the world. Having the ability to vote is one of the most important, powerful things you can ever be given to do. It was amazing to travel overseas and see people crying after they voted and they got to come out of the polling station because they'd never been able to do it before. Let's be like that. Let's, right. let's remember that not everywhere people get, are empowered as citizens and have the right to go vote who represents them. Um, if you've never voted before and you're a Republican, I want you to go out and push the red button and vote and come out and feel the way those people did overseas. That Having a real watch. impact, getting the choice to do it, that. There are countries around the globe where they still don't get to do it, but it's amazing to watch folks that have never had that opportunity, and then you get to see them come out, grown men in their 60s with tears in their eyes, telling you through your interpreter, I got to vote. Can you believe that our nation, we get to vote here? Well, feel that way here. Right. Empower your friends and neighbors. Go out and do it. Go right. vote. Well, thank you for that impactful message. Absolutely.
want to thank Tony Tenderholt for coming and visiting with us this time, uh, early morning on a Friday. Uh, make sure you vote, and uh, we'll see you next time on White Hat Law. Well, that's a wrap, folks, and we want to thank you for listening to the White Hat Law Show here with Warren Nord. To find out more about Warren, check him out at nordlaw.com. See you next time.